Okay, let me introduce myself first. I'll be the facilitator for the session. And my name is Professor Deborah Davis. I'm the clinical chair here in Canberra, Australia. Um, and it does give me enormous pleasure to facilitate this session. And it feels like we've come full circle because um, I was um, part of the organizing committee for the first ever um, VIDM and continued for the next 10 years. And um, was around Sarah when she was dreaming up this idea. I have no idea how she dreamed it up, but we'll hear from Sarah in a moment um, to find out about that. Um, I want to, um, it's customary in Australia to acknowledge the first people of this place. And um, Australia is a country that has uh, many First Nations um, countries within it. And on the, the land that I sit today and Sarah as well, um, it, the first people of this place are the Ngunnawal people. And I pay my respects to them uh, and their elders past and present. And I um, am always really um, in awe of their culture. They've had 60, more than 60,000 years of continuous culture on this place. And I cannot help but think about the, the women's business um, is what they call childbirth knowledge um, that um, has led them to be so successful. All, all the women that have birthed on this place, all the knowledge and skills that they have, which are largely lost to us now, to our great shame. So um, respects to the Ngunnawal people. Um, so as I said, um, it gives me great pleasure to um, introduce Sarah to you. Um, Sarah started this 15 years ago. Um, to celebrate the International Day of the Midwife um, on her kitchen table, which I remember well in Dunedin, New Zealand. Um, the first year she pretty much spent talking to herself. There, there weren't a lot of, actually, I think I remember having five people um, in one of our first sessions. And who would have guessed, she says, all these years later, um, that um, a global pandemic would also make the virtual conference such an everyday occurrence. We're all very familiar with it, but 15 years ago, it was really a groundbreaking initiative. Um, so um, in this presentation, Sarah will be reflecting on the lessons she's learned over the years um, as she's been facilitating the VIDM. She'll talk about leadership, co collaboration and innovation. Uh, I'm lucky enough to work um, in a similar de department now with Sarah. We've both moved from New Zealand and um, she's very much a valued uh, colleague and friend. So welcome, Sarah, and thank you for your initiative. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing about it today. Thank you so much, Deb. I, I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here. Yes, gosh, who can who can believe it that you know, 15 years ago we were in um, we were in Dunedin working in New Zealand working on this as an idea, and here we are now, 15 years later, and um, the virtual International Day of the Midwife is still going strong. And um, in your um, introduction, you said you were. Uh, first committee, I think committee is a little bit of an exaggeration. I think it was just you and me, was it just uh, mulling things over, um, over a glass of wine every now and again. So thank you and thank you everybody. Um, I um, Now I am missing my um, pointy um, arrow thingy to move my slides along unless I can't see for locking. Lorraine, are you able to help me with that? I probably haven't made you present us, Sarah. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, while Deb does that, I love this photo. That's my daughter, actually, uh, um, Ellen, who is now a nurse. Um, and who knows, maybe one day she'll be a midwife. Um, looking very energetic there. Um, so I was asked by the uh, organising committee to sort of reflect on the last 15 years of my experience with a virtual international day of the midwife. And, um, but as I, as, um, I just want to repeat what, uh, Deb said, and that is, um, to acknowledge that we're on the land of the Ngunnawal people and the Nambri people. And, um, I'm just so very, very grateful and blessed and privileged to be on that land. And I too would like to pay my, uh, respects to their elders past and past, present and emerging and pay my respect to all indigenous peoples, particularly midwives across the whole world. Thank you. And I'm not quite sure what's happened to this slide. Maybe we've missed one of the photos. But anyway, this is um, just a couple of photos from the Canberra area where I, I am so lucky to be living. 
so that's me and that is Blackie the cat and uh, we uh, we started uh, the virtual international day midwife 15 years ago sorry we've already said that didn't we um, and um, it was very much um, a it came out as a really a, a thinking about um, I might put the slide back in. That we, I was at the bottom of the world, seemed to me at the time, and I just felt so um, isolated. I guess maybe one word. It sounds a bit dramatic, but uh, so then back. So that was two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and we started to think about so how can we connect with people around the world? And today, in today's um, session, I, I want to just talk about. Three things that, that, well, there's lots of things we've learned over the years, but three elements, three things that um, I've learned being involved with the Virtual International Day of the Midwife that hopefully we can not only take forward with um, in our midwifery, um, not only take forward, not only as the Virtual International Day of the Midwife grows and continues, uh, hopefully for years to come, but that we can take into our lives as practicing midwives and those three things that i'm just identified for today is recognizing opportunities um is leadership and um part of that is recognizing um opportunities having passion and being resolute so the day came about because everybody went off and left me i was left i think it was about 2008 i think something like that and um there was a big icm conference in um south africa and as you can see there that's our, our notice board um and uh we um we all the lecturers put when we were back when we're if we're in and if we're out and you'll see by finding that i was only one in and everybody else had gone over to um um south africa for the icm the international confederation of midwives and um i was left by myself and i thought gosh you know this was uh i was you know i, thought, I really feel like i'm missing out here and I couldn't afford to go. Um, I couldn't uh, take, afford to take the time off work. And obviously, we couldn't all leave the office. We had to. Some of us had to stay behind. And I was feeling. I have to be honest with you. Feeling a little hard done by. And then I thought, well, gosh, if I'm feeling like this, and I'm in a, in a very privileged position, what are midwives um, feeling who are in resource poor countries? Um, so I started to think back then. But well, so how can we um, connect with people? How can we um, share information, research, and just even have conversations with people when we can't meet in the face-to-face -face context? And I have to say, I feel a little bit sort of oh, out of date, really, talking about this now, because, um, of course, since the, uh, since the pandemic, I mean, all this is ho hum. But but in um, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, it was a very real question. So, in terms of leadership, um, one of the absolute key things I think we need to think about is how do we recognise and lean into opportunities. So that um, setting up the virtual international day of the midwife was definitely an opportunity for me. There was an opportunity um, that I. Um, that I led into, um, I was uh, not afraid to take the lead, and um, and people who know me know that I'm, I'm very quick to uh, put myself out there. And that can be very difficult for some people who aren't, um, who who feel maybe a little shy, a little bit timid, and you can be forgiven for being scared about. Well, what happens if it goes wrong? Or oh, what if people laugh at me? But try and put those feelings aside and um, make the move and okay so if it doesn't work it doesn't work and there's always lessons to be learned there um, and look how successful the the VIDM has been ever since I'm so glad that we made the move to, to um, take this opportunity the next thing about being a leader um, and 
is having a passion and, and don't, not being afraid to share that passion. I was pa passionate and still am um, passionate about um, using w ways to bring midwives together, to provide opportunities for networking, to break down traditional opportunities for networking, um, break down, sorry, traditional barriers to professional development, to model lifelong um, learning practices, especially in the infor informal context, to model open communication and collaborative practices. And back then in uh, 2008 or thereabouts, uh, we were learning and getting involved in open access um, practices, whereby uh, information became openly accessible and um, and and weren't put behind firewalls and I think those issues now are just as um, relevant today as they were back then and back then of course we were also very passionate about increasing digital lit literacy and capability again not so much a problem now because COVID has done us a huge favor um, and I think I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute so those eight, those those things I've just listed, but my passions, they were the aims of the Virtual International Day of Midwife, what we wanted to achieve. When you're passionate about something, your passion will ignite the people around you. And as a leader, you have to have passion because otherwise you want people come on board with you. Won't, and I hate the cliche, won't travel that journey with you. So have passion and don't be afraid to share it. Now, just looking at that that picture, my golly gosh, I lived in an untidy house. Gosh, Deb, can you remember how untidy my, my house always used to be? I hope it's a little bit tidy now. Oh, good gracious. Obviously wasn't passionate about my housework, that's for sure. So another thing about being a leader, we've talked about having um, a vision, being passionate. The other thing is being resolute. We had lots of ups and downs um, with the VIDM over the years. Um, lots of things that were issues, um, not least the, um, issues around technology, around how we market the VIDM, how we get people involved. And there was always something that would crop up that would be a big issue. Um, but we were resolute that whatever happened, we were going to go ahead, we were going to put on the VIDM, we were going to problem solve, even if it was a, a big technical blow up right at the last minute, we would get together and collaboratively as a team work out a solution. That picture there, um, so, uh, the one uh, that's on my left, of course, still more pictures of the very untidy kitchen. The one on the right is me um, actually sitting, uh, I think it was 2012. Yes, it was. I was actually in the UK. And so I was facilitating the BIDM from the UK. So I dragged my computer over with me. Um, we were, I was on holiday with family. We were in, uh, we went on a trip. We had to find our, our, um, I don't know, it would have been um, Airbnb or something like that. I had to set up. I had no idea if the internet was going to work. I had no, actually, we got caught up in traffic. So I was even at one point really stressing that I'd even get there in time. But we overcame it and we were absolutely resolute that, that we were going to do what we said we were going to do. People do try and put you off. People are naturally, I think so. I think people are naturally negative and it isn't necessarily because they mean to be, but because I think they're just afraid, afraid of failure. So be resolute. Don't be put off. Don't let people talk you out of what you want to do. Um, that's certainly been um, a very big lesson for me um, in the last 15 years and actually in life generally. Um, and bring people together with you when, when they are worrying about things and, and problem solve problems problem solve problems together um, and then you'll find even when you're not expecting to be or you're not meaning to be but you can be then an inspiration to people without even realizing that that's what you are um, one of the things that uh, I was just absolutely so proud of is that after a couple of years of putting on the uh, VIDM um, some colleagues around the world who are occupational therapists did then they were so inspired by what we were doing for midwives that they did exactly the same thing for occupational therapists and their initiative which was a similar approach um, 
took place over quite some some years. So I'm very proud of the fact that we inspired others. The second um, element of, of the learnings um, that I've taken on board is about innovation. And there's three elements of in innovation that I, I would like to pass on to you. Uh, gosh, we could talk for, for days on end about leadership. We could talk for days on end about innovation. But these are just a three, um, three tips that I would pass on. The first one, and again, apologies for this. I'm not quite sure what's happened to um, um, the um, slides. But the first element of innovation is keep things simple and focused. Uh, it's very easy to um, have big, wide, wild um, uh, ideas, um, but you've got to keep things simple, especially if you're trying stuff new for the first time. And uh, we, for the Virtual International Day, the midwife, especially in the early days, we chose uh, technologies that were freely available um, that didn't cost us any money and um, that that um, well I was going to say that weren't time consuming in their use the back end work that we had to do especially in the ah, uh, you're seeing the slide is fine I'm, I'm seeing that the slide isn't so I think what I'm seeing is different from your see, seeing Lorraine so um, it's good that hopefully everybody can see the full slide um, what was I saying um, I'm, I'm, I'm distracted there um, we used uh, technologies such as wikis uh, the technologies for our uh, actual presentations have changed over the years but we've been very lucky to have friends who've allowed us to access various technologies uh, we use blogs we and even just talking to people and um, connecting with people especially in the early days when when we didn't know anyone out there who could help us even using social media like Facebook and Twitter uh, I was saying that the time behind putting all these things together it was um, um, it was time consuming in the early days because this was a new idea. Um, we had to figure out what worked in terms of, say, for example, instructions. And every year was a learning opportunity. And I, I suspect that um, it's the same. It continues to be even even after all these years, even after a pandemic when this technology is, is so more ubiquitous. Um, I suspect that we learn things every year and try out new things every year. Um, and I'm really. Um, uh, glad to see Isha saying that uh, she's working to um, kickstart things in I Nigeria, and that's just absolutely wonderful. So please don't re um, don't hesitate to reach out to us um, if if you need support. Uh, um, we'll do that. Um, and yes, Linda is saying you're still learning curve every year. Absolutely. So that's even more important to, for reason for keeping things. Um, simple. Actually, the photo I can see is me in bed. I used to do a lot of my presentations in bed. So keep it simple and focus. The second element of innovation is resilience. Um, it's hard work being an innovator. It's hard work bringing, bringing new ideas into, into place. Um, Sometimes things work and goes really well. Other times it doesn't, and you have to go back to the um, drawing board. Um, that the, here is a picture of me being dragged up a very, very steep. I don't know if you can see clearly enough. I'm looking exhausted, and I'll tell you, I was swearing a little bit at my husband who was dragging me up the hill. But I tell you what, at the end of the at the top of the hill, this is um, in Queensland. At the top of the hill, we could look out at the ocean, and um, this was during whale watching season with the whales are swimming down the coast of Australia. We were able to sit at the top of the hill, though, watching the whales swim by, and that, that was the most incredible um, day for me. And working in this project, I had exactly the same feelings. Um, it can be tiring, it can be exhausting. And that sometimes you feel like you go, you try, you go forward five steps and then get knocked back. Um, but we 
It's worth persevering and it's also worth celebrating your successes when things do work out. Um, so very worth persevering because the reward is worth it. The third element of innovation um, that I would like to, that I think is important to think about as part of being an innovator is not being afraid to take risks. Now, you may say, well, that's, that's a bit weird. Why would you want to take risks? Well, when I say take risks, I do put a caveat around that. Um, I mean, I'm not suggesting you go off and do wild, crazy, wacky things that are going to end up in loss of life. Um, definitely don't do that. And when you are thinking about taking risks, you also need to think about how you manage that. So you put things in place that help you manage that risk. Um, uh, the pictures I've put here is for some people um, getting on what a Ferris wheel might be a, considered to be a very risky thing to do. Um, and this picture here on my left, the Ferris wheel with all those beautiful flowers, is um, our flower festival in Canberra. It's called Floriad. And, um, and for sure, getting on top of that on that Ferris wheel, uh, a lot of people might not like it, especially if you've got a fear of heights. But when you get to the top of that Ferris wheel, the view down is just absolutely superb. I think I took this photo um, a few years ago. You see, literally, you can see for, for, for a far distance, you can see throughout the whole of the Floriad Festival, so you can see all these beautiful flowers. And here, actually, this picture here is, uh, as you can see, is the world, and that's a beautiful metaphor. Um, when you're taking risks, you do make mistakes, and you've got to take that, you, you know, that's part of the learning process. You are going to mis take, make mistakes, um, and, and you learn by it, and you support each other when you do make those mistakes. And as I said, you put into, into place frameworks that hopefully those mistakes aren't too, have too devastating an impact on what you're trying to innovate for. So learn by your mistakes. Try things, new things out until you find the right approach or the right model, the right fit for what you're trying to achieve. And uh, as I said before, when things uh, work out, you can um, achieve great success. Success may not be what you're thinking that you were looking for, and it might lead you in a completely different ad um, direction to where you thought you were going. Um, and so another element around that is being agile. Don't be afraid to follow the path um, that you find yourself going down, even if it's a different path from what you're expecting. The second element of um, that I've learned about um, through the last 15 years is the importance of, of collaboration. And I think that's probably one of the big lessons and the big joys um, and the big benefit that I've found through um, VIDM. Um, as Deb said, it, we started off in 2008, 2009, just basically the two of us. And then over the years, we met people who were interested in our work um, through a lot through our e-learning connections. Um, and a, a number of people have come to help us and are still on the committee now, like Lorraine, actually aren't midwives. And they've joined us and support us because of their love of learning. And that um, particularly warms my heart. So thank you, Lorraine, and thank you, Chris, um, who've worked with us for so many years because of the love of learning and because of their love of supporting the midwifery community. So in terms of um, collaboration, again, we could talk about collaboration all day, but there's three things that have particularly struck me over the years about collaboration. And the first one is teamwork. Many hands make light work. I mean, that's a, an old cl cl cliche. And I've, I've already said I've been absolutely blown away by the generosity of the people who work with us. It is very time consuming and there is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. But many hands make light work. And working together, sharing ideas will make you a lot more productive and a lot more effective in the um, long run. The slide I've put up there, you'll see, is um, just an example of the collaboration. Um, you'll see two logos. And that first logo on the left was the initial logo that we started off with. And do you know what? I um, 
but this came about by um, I was a blog blogging at the time and I just put up on my blog look we need a logo for virtual international day of the midwife I've got no ideas I'm hopeless at creative ideas like this and I'm hopeless at design and um, I've just put up a post can anyone help me can not only can you not only come up with an idea but can you actually design it I've got no money um, and I just put it out there and um, you know I, I'm embarrassed to admit I can't I can see the lady's face I can't remember her name but a lovely lady not even a midwife um, an educator in New Zealand came up with this idea um, did the graphic design for me and this was all through online um, communication now I'm a bit embarrassed to admit that the um, logo on the right um, is, is our latest logo and I'm not quite sure how the, um, everybody got to that but it's absolutely beautiful and I love this this example of how things have changed over the years so thank you whoever came up with them um, with the ideas around the it hasn't changed an awful lot but it's definitely beautiful and it is wonderful teamwork um, so things do change and um, I don't know how to put this. Sometimes when you particularly are the innovator and you start off with an idea and it grows and it changes and you yourself move. I finished up. Um, I moved on from the committee, I don't know, but I think three, four, five years ago. And it was very hard because this was my baby. And I felt very, on the one hand, it's really weird that I, I actually felt, oh, I don't want to hand over my baby. <laughs> um, but I couldn't be present. The lesson I learned was not to be precious about about the work. It's not all about me. It's about the community. Um, and so uh, it was a bit of a hard lesson for me to learn when I when I moved on about handing over my baby. Um, and but they were that's life, and you move on. You do other things, and that's a good thing. And other people take on your projects. Other people take on your innovation. Move it in other directions, and that's healthy. And that's what should happen. The other vital element of the, all this is evaluation. It's absolutely critical. You've got to evaluate what you're doing because if you don't, you won't know what, know what works, what doesn't work, and how to make changes and how to improve things. The um, second element um, of um, teamwork is about um, being um, working together in a, a, a respectful way be humble trust the people you work with and respect them I've always I've always believed in a, a very equal approach to teamwork I think it's very difficult being having a team in a in a very strict hierarchy um, and I again another cliche um, there is no I in team um, and I think that's um, so absolutely true. So um, how you work in the team is critical to accept its success. If you're authoritative, if you are not, um, if you do not engage respectfully with people, your team won't work effectively. And the third thing about teamwork is that um, collaboration doesn't, I'm sorry about collaboration, is that it, doesn't just get the work done it's a two-way process you learn from each other um, and in our case we became a more of a community of practice I would say um, and it was an organic thing that's um, evolved over the years and because of that I think it's been a lot more effective and a lot stronger in the way that um, we've worked together these are just a few photos of the of the people I've met along the way who um, we met virtually and um, and then we were lucky enough to meet up face to face at the Lauren Lorraine sorry who we've um, worked with now for oh, golly 15 odd years and more we've never actually met and but it's still amazing that we still work so effectively together so where to from here We just pausing there to reflect. We've been through some very hard years the last three years. Um, excuse me, I'm just dropping the notes. Covid. 
COVID has taught us a lot about virtual communication, collaboration and learning um, and has certainly done us a big favour. Um, I was reflecting the other day, I was talking to someone the other day on a project that Professor David Deborah and I worked on um, along the same time as we were starting up the Virtual International Day at the Midwife. Um, and it was a virtual birthing centre in Second Life, which was a virtual world. The project was really innovative and hugely exciting and, and had the potential to be incredibly successful. But we were 15, I think, um, and Deb may or may not agree with me. Um, we were 15 years ahead of our time. And um, this goes back to being resilient again. Um, now, if we had started that project now, I think it would fly. It, I think it would absolutely fly. Um, so, and that is um, that is what COVID has done for us over the last two years. Um, it's it's not been easy working virtually, um, and I have to say, I think it's really um, good that we're we're getting back into face to face network because because nothing does beat that face to face being together. Is there? There's no doubt about it. Um, and, and of course, acknowledge that the ICM, the International Congress of Midwives, Confederation of Midwives, sorry, it has their face-to-face -face conference in Bali in a couple of uh, couple of months. So I hope that some of you will be able to get together to meet up then. And it's fascinating for me now when I think about the last fifteen years that you know you, you Zoom to Zoom someone Zoom has become a verb now, um, whereas called Zoom is is an actual technology. So so for the vidm team and for educators and midwives generally COVID has done us a huge favor but when we look more broadly at what's going on in midwifery in the maternity world we um, see a lot of problems um, certainly we're seeing in australia and i suspect across the world uh, we're seeing burnout we're seeing people leaving both midwifery and healthcare professions we're having difficulty in getting people coming into the professions and on it goes. We're seeing de detrimental impacts on birthing um, because of the practices that, that went on through COVID. And we're seeing that detrimental impact on the mental health of both midwives and the women, people and families having their babies. We're seeing the impact of medicalization of birth accelerating to such an extent that in many percent, Many places, 50% cesarean section rate is normal. And physiological vaginal birth is, is the exception rather than norm. And indeed, the actual support and advocation of normal birth is, in some areas is being demonized even. You may say I'm exaggeration, but that's my, that's my perception of what's going on. And even being shut down in some cases. So moving forward, as midwives, not just as midwives who want to work and be involved in the VIDM, but as midwives generally across the profession, we need everyone to be strong leaders who can collaborate and drive innovation. And the pr principles of the VIDM when we started it are just as important and relevant now, if not more so. And I think it's really, I mean, there's lots of things that we can say that we need to move the professions forward. But I think that the three critical things there's um, for us to think about, and that is research, education, and influence. It is critical for us to do research, not just about women and people-centered care, but we've got to think about how we disseminate it far and wide and as quickly as possible. And the VIDM does such a wonderful job in that space of helping us to disseminate information and research. We've got to think about how we turn the knowledge that we gain from research into education and again make it open access and available to everyone and I'm not just talking about midwives here that we're talking about the, the people the women pregnant women people and families who are let's face it they're our users they're the reason why we're here in the first place and the re um, and I think one of the elements that we miss so much in midwifery and healthcare generally is the influencing. We need to be able to think about who we influence and how we do it. And I think this is where we really need to grow our focus and where we need to grow our skills and awareness. We need to be able to influence um, 
what goes on at the ward level, what goes on in our everyday daily practice. We need to be able to influence policy and strategy at um, our, our organizational level. And we need to influence how um, policy is made at national and global level. And this is where the VIDM can make such, play such an important part in bringing midwives together. We can give us the opportunity to network, to learn, to work together, to collaborate. Because the more we work together, the stronger we will be to influence and change policy and, and um, ensure that, the uh, that we are providing women and people-centered care. It gives us opportunities for innovation, to meeting people and innovate. It supports us. We can support each other through the IDM and events like this. We can support each other when times get tough. And we can help each other to be resilient when we uh, when we find that things are, are going, uh, things are hard. We can support each other to take risks and um, learn um, and support each other to evaluate and review and to regroup if we need to. We to be successful with um, our research and our education, our influence, we have to work with each other in a culture of trust, respect and humbleness. And when we do these things, we will see success not only in our own growth, growth and development, but also across the profession and ultimately providing effective and women people-centered care that we provide to the women and people and families that we work with. I hope that you have a very successful and enjoyable um, VIDM this year and that you're able to get to all the sessions that you um, uh, hope to get to and I know that we record the session so that you can get back but I really hope that you'll think about how you can be leaders how you can collaborate together and how you can be innovative to make sure um, to bring about real truths women and people-centered care which is absolutely the key to everything we do as midwives so thank you very much and i'd love to um, have a chat with you i think we've got a, a probably five minutes or so is there any comments or questions that um, people would like to ask looks like we've got five minutes so just um, i'll just uh, wrap up while you're thinking of your questions pop them in the public chat but um thank you sarah for a really a super um drawing out of the lessons of vidim um you know we uh learned that vidim was the result of sarah's fomo um and look where that took us 15 years on um i don't know if anybody's noticed but vidim involves no money there's no money comes in and no money goes out there's there's no sponsorship um, they are absolutely committed to it being free and accessible to everybody and recognising too that um, people in uh, less well-resourced countries don't always have access to this kind of connection and sharing of information um, that Vidim makes available. So, you know, it, it's fueled on generosity and goodwill and I think that's what makes it very special um, to me anyway um yeah thanks sarah i love i love the pictures of your messy kitchen because it just highlights to me that's the that's women's work you know um, we're amongst it all you know the messy kitchen table the the washing basket they you, know, you just make space for it don't you and, and get the work done um just seeing if we've got any questions coming there um i I love the point that you made about um, the wins from the hard work, you know, really stopping to celebrate those wins, um, walking to the top of that hill or, or whatever it is. And I, I do remember the, the highs um, after we'd run a successful VIDM conference after a lot of work that, that the high really carried you forward um, into the next conference. Um, have you got a reflection just um if we don't get any more questions here on what has contributed to the longevity sarah you probably we never imagined 15 years on we'd still be going look i think it, i mean i think it absolutely is the passion of the people involved and um 
and I think is that you know and and what has really and I said that earlier about that passion I think it's what has really fired that passion is is the is the desire to to provide something that is free that's something that um completely um accessible to everybody I mean, acknowledging of course there are midwives in in areas that can't access it because they don't have internet access or they don't have the technologies and I mean that's always been one of the problems we've had with VIDM I think COVID has certainly made technology more ubiquitous but um, um, you can't get to everybody all the time and that's just something that you have to accept um, but I think it's the passion and the generosity of the people, not just on the um, organizing committee, but of the people that come come to the event every year. And, um, uh, and yeah, that just, it's such a passion to be committed to open access and, and free, free, um, free stuff and, and networking. Yeah, thank you. I wanted you made a good point as well, Sarah, about stepping away and the difficulty of stepping away. And I know um, our own beautiful Chris Woodhouse is uh, probably grappling with this as we speak. Um, and but I think there's uh, there has been a commitment on the committee to bring in new blood. And I th my reflection is that that's probably been something that's very um, important to the longevity of of Vidum. Um, it's as you showed the logo is different there have been changes there have been improvements there have been innovation so um, it has embraced change and I my reflection is that's been important as well. I think that yeah, there, is, there are some challenges facing the idea and I'm conscious of the time but make this quick um, you know are we um, are we all zoomed out now and so I think the challenge for for the IDM now is how to harness um, people's knowledge of, of virtual engagement and what have you but now get us re-energized get midwives and um, re-energized after the last three years of being so exhausting um, and and move us from that mindset of golly I can hardly get to work every day let alone do anything outside and and, and move us into back into being Fused and motivated to to share and network and do research. So I think that's the big challenge. But I think that's a challenge not just for VIDM. I think that's a challenge across across the professions. Um, Lin Linda had a question about attracting more delegates. Um, how do we do that, Sarah? I know that's a question we often had on the committee, wasn't it? Yeah. Look, it's it's um, it's interesting. Um, and I'm looking at you know 31 users today, which is absolutely fabulous to have have that number of people here. I mean, it absolutely is. But um, there obviously is far more people we can attract. Um, oh gosh, I mean, social media absolutely um, spreading your using social media effectively is is one of the keys. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think it's, it's, it's really tricky um, because I think, especially at the moment, because I think everybody is so tired, and to, you, and, and I think, but that's, I think that's a problem across the board. Whatever you put on for people, um, they're, they're really tired, and, um, and, and we've got to think about how we re-energize people, re-motivate people. I don't have an answer for that one. I, I'm, that's a really tricky question. No, it's it, yeah, it is a tricky one. But I'm sure um, that if the committee keep uh, delivering such great quality sessions and such a good conference every year, um, it will uh, grow as it as it has enormously. All right, it is time to wrap up, Sarah. So um, I want to thank you for your uh, boldness and your innovations that you know we've really enjoyed. I hope you feel really proud of um, what Vidim has become and the contribution. And you thank made. you. Uh one of the things I didn't do very well was acknowledge your support and I couldn't have done any of this without your tremendous support. So I'm extremely grateful to you as well, Deb. So thank you. Oh, that's, that's super. Thank you. It's like Batman and Robin. I'll be your wingman any day, Sarah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you. I'll let you move on to the next session. Thanks so much. It's been great.